My name is Monica Gleberman, and you're listening to Silence On Set Podcast. On today's podcast, we're talking to Justin Johnson Cortez, who plays Callian on the CW hit Walker Independence. The show follows Abby Walker, an affluent and tough-minded Bostonian, whose husband is murdered before her eyes while on her journey out west. Abby arrives in the town of Independence, Texas, where she encounters a diverse set of people running from their pasts, chasing their dreams, and keeping their own secrets. So to talk about the season and that crazy finale, here's Justin Johnson Cortez. So like I said, I'm so excited to have you on. I've wanted to talk to you um, about the show. And as the series has come out, you've come up constantly. So we're so excited to have you on. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Maybe you saved the best for last. I don't know. I'm just going to say it. Doesn't make myself feel better now. <laughs> no, I'm excited. I can't wait because now you got it all out with everybody else and, and we'll see. We'll see what comes up here. It'll be fun. See what happens. Um, okay, so I'm going to jump in because I love Killian so much. And I've talked about this before related to the show. But my biggest thing is that not like to, I guess I, I'm allowed to say this. For the network, I feel like it's very white on the network. And Walker <laughs> and Walker Dependence and other shows have been very adamant at showing diversity. We're not yeah. getting to a point, I think, where we need to be at, obviously, because I'm bringing it up. Because if we were at that point, I, we wouldn't be talking about it. But they're yeah. doing, they're making strides towards it. And I personally feel like, in in particular, Walker Independence has really made an effort to show various different kind of aspects of people's lives. So you play a character that is part of an indigenous community. We see the community. We hear the native language without subtitles a lot of times, which I love. We see things that we might yeah, not know what they are and you got to look it up. And, you know, if you want to know what that means or what he's holding, you have to research it and things like that. So I wanted to ask you when you initially got the character and kind of read about that and read all of that infusion that was going to be happening. What did that mean to you to be representing that whole kind of community and showing it in a way where it's not to further the storyline? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm glad you asked this. So originally, you know, you just get the you just get the script and you get you get the breakdown for the character. And um, at that point, you don't know how much is going to be involved. And when I first got it, my gut reaction was like, "Oh, he's just going to be this one native character amongst these other characters in this town." And I my my gut reaction was like, "I don't know if I want to do this. You know, I don't know if I want to be like the token Indian on this show. You know what I mean?" Um, and then I met with the director and the showrunner and the producers and immediately they're like, that's not what we want to do here. We want to, we want to make him a part of this show. We want to make his world a part of this show as well. And I was like, okay. So I felt immediately, I felt better. Um, but then like you said, the responsibility, like, then you feel that way. You're like, okay, I got to get it right. Because I wanted to show this character as a person, as a, as a complex human, in this world, you know, in this changing world that he's about to, uh, that we're about to show everybody, because that's what was happening here in this time. It's like the landscape is changing for everybody. You got people coming west. You get, you got people getting pushed out of their land, um, and that's what made the West so, I think, compelling for for people to tell their the story. Um, just historically, you know, we have so many westerns, and I think that's always been interesting to people, but they haven't, they haven't really figured out a way to involve everybody in the right capacity i think and um i feel like walker independence we've done a really good job of that like you said we're showing parts of Callan's world that have nothing to do with the main plot you know like we're getting to see his his tribe we're going to see his camp um and whether that's always driving the story forward um that that's up for debate you know what i mean i think there's things in there that are driving the story forward but also we're just getting to see it and uh, and i love that um and I didn't know that initially, so I think it was a it was a surprise to me, and it was it was one that um as soon as I heard that being part of the conversation, I really wanted to lean into as well. And the and the fact that we don't subtitle things, I mean, obviously we subtitle it sometimes, but I love. I asked for a couple of times. I was like, let's just let him say these words, and it's a part of this world, you know. It's like, but we don't have to. We don't have to subtitle everything. Uh, let the emotion speak. Let the person speak. And and um, I just love that about it. So I was excited. I love that too. Um, 
you know, this this came up to um, I think it was Philly that was saying for Gus, he was so excited because he gets to say a word that like you that um one of the words that you like taught and he was so proud during the interview and he kept repeating the word and he was like and I, I was so I was so impressed that I got to say it and then he went on about what it meant so it obviously you have I know you have a close relationship with Philly but for things like that where you know even you're speaking you know a, a different language and you're kind of passing it on to your fellow colleagues like is that exciting to you that they get so excited to even know like I learned this or I could say this and, and like in interviews they're all like excited telling me things that they've learned from you yeah yeah you know, you know what like I don't speak about so I had to I had to learn this with our translator who's incredible amazing guy he's a friend now he's family now um and Philly really he was like hey man I want I want to do something here you know I was like I think that's a great idea. Like, so we talked about it. We talked to the translator. I think, is it, did he say it was Hato? Mm -hmm. Is that the word he was saying? That was um, the word. <laughs> yeah. So it's like in the scene, you know, it, we wanted to establish not only that, like, Callan and Augustus have known each other for a long time. Their, their relationship is the oldest one out of all the characters um, in the show. So, you know, Philly and I always try to find a way to strengthen that in the story, whether it was like really painted for for the audience or if it's just like a little nugget like that, that people would have to like put together on their own, you know? So I love that kind of stuff. Um, as a storyteller, I, I love putting those little like gems in there for people to find. And um, yeah, I think it's amazing that that someone like Philly, he like, he wants to go there. He wants to really dive into that and, and still like strengthen all these backstories. And um, yeah, I, I mean, I was honored to speak this language and I was honored that he wanted to speak the language as well and, and strengthen that. And like I said, it, it's, it's authentic because he would, he would be my friend. He would be part of this world, you know, and he would, he would know certain words. So I really loved uh, that we were able to put that in. So how, after those conversations, when you felt more comfortable, how has Kellyan changed from the day that you read him and felt good about it? And you were like, I'm doing this to the finale. Wow. Yeah. No, he changed a lot. Um, well, at least in my mind, you know, he, I mean, he changed, changed drastically from, from the time I read it initially to even the time I got to t speak to the showrunner and the director and the producers. It's like, you know, you get just a, a little glimpse when you read sides or when you get a script. Um, but then when you talk about the world more with them and, and what they have in mind, then you immediately start to see the possibilities, I guess. So the character grows for you and you're like, okay, there's depth here. There, there could be depth here. Um, at the end of the day, you don't have all the scripts, so you don't know what it's going to be. But I had faith that they were going to, they were going to live up to what they said, essentially. And I trusted them there. Um, and then once you get into shooting, you know, and the, and the scripts come out, you're like, oh, all right, this is, uh, this is him interacting with people from town. And then as we went deeper in episode three, we introduced a little nugget of this girl that Callian sees. And, um, and that little inner interaction really sparked a lot of his backstory that we were able to see in episode six and episode seven, where it all kind of came out where Callian was, where Callian came from, uh, why he found Abby, uh, what drove him to have this connection with her. And so it's like, now you're really seeing him as a person that has had his own experience before this white woman came into his life, which is really important to me. Cause it's like, at the beginning, I was like, it can't just be like, he's infatuated with her because she's this beautiful white woman. She's very beautiful. I get that, but that can't be what the story is about. And so once all of that started to come out script after script, it was really wonderful. And, um, and then you get to, you know, you get to really see the depth there. And, and then that storyline continued. So I was really grateful that that we ended up going that way. Um, and like I said, at the beginning, you don't know where the scripts are going to go. Um, you you kind of just have to have faith and and, uh, and trust the people that, that, that say they have your back. And they did. So that's good. Yeah, I loved, you know, adding that part in because I do think not only did it add depth to it, but I do think it does make it make more sense. Like it works mm -hmm. because there's tragedy. There's there's stuff there that, and there's there's things that he is processing. And when we first meet him, I feel like, and this doesn't change throughout the show, but when we first meet him, he's very wise and he's calm and he makes decisions and he's strategic and he's welcoming yeah. to everybody, even though they're not welcoming necessarily to him. 
And I feel like he's very open to everyone. But as the season goes on, while that stays all, you know, the same, you start seeing that that he's human, you know, that there are like some yeah. cracks in there and that he's been through some stuff and some horrible stuff, which also yeah. kind of reiterates our life and some of our history. And so he's been through some horrible yeah. things and him being able to relate to her in that way to me was kind of like a really beautiful moment. It was really sad. I got choked up watching like, especially in, I think it was episode six when they show the majority of it. And we're really kind of finding yeah. out what's going on. And we, he's seeing her like, you know, I just remember going, it all makes sense. Like now I completely yeah. understand like where he was coming from and why he is the way he is. So like, because you get the scripts the way that you do, when you read that script, were you like, ah, like, yes, like all, all the like dots like point together because he's been through so much and he's, and he's still risen above it. Like it's it, like, he's just such a good person. Like, and he, and he's been able to push through it while dealing with it, I guess, or trying to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah, no, I got the script and I, and I loved it. Uh, Ryan Harris wrote it and he's incredible. And, um, and yeah, I got it. And I was like, oh, this is, this is great. Cause now, like you said, it made the story make sense. Uh, originally I had to work with something on my own that, you know, just going into shooting the pilot, I'm like, okay, why is this woman important to me? And like, I had to, I had to build all that myself, but this script really made it clear for the audience and um, just kind of made that whole story connect for me. And um, in a way that the, again, the audience could understand and uh, that was important to me because again, I didn't want them getting that that wrong interpretation of it being like, well, Callie is just infatuated with Abby. Um, so that was it was amazing to get that script. And like you said, like he he, you get to see him as a human and the things he's gone through and how he's dealt with it. Um, you know, I I definitely would love to see Callie and go you know get a little messy because he is so controlled. Uh, I, I would love to see the side of his human side where you know things don't go as well and he makes some some choices that you know maybe are questionable and you know i always love when characters kind of make the wrong choices for the right reasons i guess or make bad decisions for the right reasons um it's just you know adds a layer and because it's something that we could all connect to as humans it's like we we don't know how to do things right you know we don't see it all before it happens so like a lot of times we end up kicking ourselves or or wishing we had done things differently but most of the time it's still coming out of like the right place in your heart. It just comes out wrong. Um, so I'd like to see the messier side of Callian for sure. And, uh, and, and see him mess up a little bit. Maybe him and Hoyt could switch. <laughs> I was just going to say um, either they have to hang out more or maybe it will rub off on him <laughs> or Hoyt will get yeah. him in some sort of trouble because uh, Matt seems to be able to handle fun. And I love when they partner the two of you up together too on the show because you it's guys a lot of fun and like yeah, it's yeah so funny it's hilarious like because of how you both play your your characters so because they're so different the scenes are just naturally funny i mean it's just it's so good yeah. the dynamic there is is so much fun to play and matt is hilarious and, and yeah the energy of each of those characters is just like they play off each other really well um He's such a cowboy in, in all the best ways. So I love that when we get to team up like that. It's great. Well, um, so I have a few like fun questions because we always talk about like deep stuff, but I like to break it up a little bit. So yes. I got to ask, first of all, costumes. Let's talk outfits. You have okay. some coolest costume, wardrobe, like things that they give you. So let's talk about it. You You get to see it. You try it on. How does this whole process go? Yeah. Is it like kind of adding to it as the show goes on? Yeah, no, Marion Toy was our was our costume designer. She was incredible. And um, you know, we tried on lots of different things at the start. Uh it's it's always funny, like the one that you're not drawn to initially is like in the room when you're just trying things on, is like usually the one they go with. They're like, Oh, we went with this, and you're like, oh, I didn't really like that one that much. But then you see it on screen, you're like, Oh, it looks great. And then like I, I'll play it back in my mind, I'll be like, yeah, I think that other thing I liked a lot probably wouldn't have looked as great on screen um, as this does. So th they killed it. They did a great job. Um, Larry Tang, or, or the guy who, the director who did the first three episodes, he was like, all right, I got this idea, you know, I want the bow in this, in this rifle to be like on your back, crossed like this. And I'm like, yeah, it looks awesome. Except you can't walk through any doors or uh, <laughs> or anything like that. And uh, 
and this rifle is actually it's really heavy it's a it's a real you know it's it's a it's a real like rifle a replica rifle um obviously we don't use any live rounds or anything but it, it has the weight and then um i have my bow and all my arrows in the quiver and you get those on and getting on a horse you know i'm i'm pretty decent horseback rider i love riding horses um you know i could like swing up on horses do all this stuff suddenly you get all this on and you're like whoa this is so heavy um this changes the game completely and then you start to like think about like oh i i don't think i would actually enjoy living back back then you know it's like this like romantic idea you have and you realize now it would have sucked i would have been like dirty and tired and and sweaty all the time uh but but yeah so the, the costume looks amazing we have we had some some beads around my neck i had a medicine pouch around my neck um but walking through doors was probably the most difficult thing to do when I was in town and it caused everybody to laugh constantly. I mean, there was takes that we'd get to the end of the scene and I'd just ruin it because I'd like run into the door like this and be stuck. So if you watch back, you'll notice that, that Callian always has a way of kind of going sideways into a doorway and then go sideways this way out of the door. It's like, you got to figure out those tricks as you, um, as you get into it. Um, and then the other thing is I had um, leggings, traditional like le leggings with a breech cloth and uh, like there was no pants under there, you know, like I was exposed underneath, you know, it was just, I just have a breech cloth, but like my ass was hanging out all the time, like, like always, you know, and I'd like sit in my chair at times and cross, like put my leg up to cross it over and my whole like right butt cheek is hanging out of my uh, of my leggings. And and once people discovered it, then it became a thing. I'm sure Katie Finley probably said something about it because um, it was one of I, her favorite. I, I actually realized that I think I have Katie tomorrow. So, cause I, I was like, I think you're okay. laughing, but I think I have Katie tomorrow. So she might be talking about your butt. We might maybe All right. come up. I hope she talks about my butt. She better talk about my butt. She better, she right? about it enough on, yeah. <laughs> So um, when that happens, do they, so what do they do? Do they give you something or like fix it, the costume? So you don't have to worry about like, you know, just showing everything to everybody like while you're offset. Yeah. You know, so the breech cloth works, it, it goes underneath and it kind of comes up over the belt. So like the actual like main parts are, are covered, but the side parts are not. Um, fun fact, I requested it to be traditional leggings because when we first started shooting, um, I had like fake, for our pilot, I had pants and then we just cheated it like they were leggings. We had the breech cloth over that, but they were full on pants. And I knew it was about to get really hot um, just just because the weather was changing. And I was like, can we please do traditional leggings? I need some like some breathability down here. And she was like, yeah, it's great. And I was like, also it'll, you know, they're realistic. I want, I want the authentic thing. And um, so no, I requested, I requested for my butt to be out most of the time, but you know, I don't know if we ever see it on camera. I gotta, I, I gotta go back and watch and just like try to spot if there's any points where you could just see like a butt cheek or anything. Yeah. Like so that. if anyone's listening, <laughs> go back and watch. <laughs> you can watch on the CW. I'll go back and watch, and we'll see if we can catch something that you yeah. might not realize. You watch on, I, you watch you, on you HBO can... now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let us know. Take a screenshot and then put it up somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, and we'll definitely shoot to uh beyond number one if someone catches you <laughs> with a with a shot like I hope that. So oh, we'll okay. have to like strategically put some of those in if, when we get you know a season two. That's so amazing. Um, let's also talk hair. This is a very sexy set of of people on this crew. Um, and this cast. And there's some gorgeous hair. You got Matt with some nice hair. I mean, like Philly's got some good hair. Like everybody's got some hair. So you have some gorgeous, it's like nicer than mine. I mean, mine's like pulled back. It's nicer than mine hair. So I need all the information. How do you have your hair look so good? What do you do? Give us the details. I don't know. It's not as nice right now. It's probably like, it probably looks greasy or something now. Um, on good. the show... On the show, when we first started filming, my hair was only, it was probably only to here. Um, so I had to have extensions to to help me out. Uh, and these extensions are clip-ins and they're heavy on your head. You could like feel them. And the hard thing about extensions is you don't, you don't necessarily feel it because it's not connected to your head. 
So it always like get caught in things. Um, and then you don't realize until you're like, oh wait, it's pulling. And you're like, oh, that's, that's, that's the hair. That's the hair getting caught. Um, but uh, our hair people, Aline, and uh, they were, they were just like, they were incredible. They, they killed it. They, they made my hair look amazing. Probably too amazing. It, it like, it, I don't know what it was. It was so windy out there, but for some reason it always blew in the right direction. You know, I got pretty good about knowing where the wind was and turning, but, um, you know, the pilot at one point, it was like right across the face. And I was like, they're not going to use this shot at all. And then you look in the pilots toward the end when like, when Callian meets Hoyt for the first time and he's like, Callian's like walking up and there's just hair, you know, just like coming across my face. And I watch it back. I'm like, that looks pretty cool. So like, it actually looks good. I don't think, I think that's the good thing about being a guy. You can kind of pull it off. If you get hair in your face, like there's something like rock and roll about it. Um, so I think I was safe either way, but by the end of it, it was just like constantly blowing like this. And uh, yeah, that caused a lot of laughs as well. Do you use like any product or anything like on your own? Like I'm, I'm sure on the show, they do a ton of stuff to you and you have to, you know, it's all organized and everything. But do you do anything to take care of it? Because it, it's gorgeous. Like I'm, your hair is gorgeous. I'm the, I'm the worst with my hair. I, um, really? Uh, Probably you don't wash it know. as much as. No, I I I, I use like a, a shampoo when I need to wash it, and then I I kind of just grab whatever conditioner's in there. I, I live with my wife and my two daughters, and and so like sometimes I use my kids' conditioner if there's some in there. Uh, I hardly ever buy my own conditioner, um. So I that's a question for my wife. She's not here, unfortunately. I'd be like, baby, what what, sh- what conditioner do you use? She, you know, but she's not here right now. Um, so I do that and um. Yeah, I don't, but I don't like, I don't use like blow dryers or, or curlers or anything. So it probably like keeps it healthy. I don't know. Maybe. Um, yeah, so I'm lucky I have it. Basically, I'm, you're I'm a typical husband. You're a typical husband. Yeah. Which is, grab whatever my wife has in the shower. I don't even care. Yeah. And then, of course, you have like the guy hair, which is like you come out and it looks perfect. Whereas all of us women, we have to like straighten it. And then the extensions that you're talking about. We all know what those are. We all have used them. So it's like, it's so funny. But like, yeah, guys have this great ability to just walk out. What the hell? Like, we all have to do so much work. But you guys are just my wife, my wife hates it. My wife gets so mad because like, she has, um, some days she has two different textures. Some days she has like straight hair on top and curly hair on the bottom. She's like, what is going on with this? And she's like, why is your hair like this? And mine is like this today. And it's, it's funny because... I mean, I've been married with, uh, for 15 years now. And it's like, you know, there are certain things that you don't notice about your wife because like, I'm like, babe, your hair looks great to me. What are you talking about? She's like, no, look at this. And she's like explaining it in, in detail. And I think there's just things that we notice about ourselves that, that other people pick up, um, just to, to focus on, I don't know, That's but so I, I, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm grateful I have this hair. I'm, I'm happy I have it. I'll keep it for as long as it wants to stay on my head. And uh, hopefully that that's for a while. <laughs> well, it looks good. So, I mean, I had to ask because everybody too, I mean, like even with, you know, Kate and then um, like, it's just like everybody I'm, I'm asking about hair, like Kath, like, you know, Catherine's hair, it's just everybody is, it's amazing. So I know on the show, but it's just funny because on the show, they do a lot to it. So I'm always like, all right, that's cool. But what are you doing? So you're, yeah. you're. I wish I had a better answer. Stuff. No, but no, that's, that's a very normal response. So a lot of guys are like, listen, whatever's in like the freaking shower is like what I grab and like, it is what it is, but like, you're just lucky. So it looks, you have gorgeous hair. So I have to ask you, you, are you keeping it long in for hopes of a season two? Because everybody's asking me renewal, renewal. We haven't, you know, so is that why you're keeping it long? Would you normally cut it or? Yeah, I think, I mean, I like, I like long hair um but it's like depends on the day right like some days I wake up and I'm like oh there's so much hair and my wife's like <laughs> she'll laugh at me like you know it, it's it's almost I think everyone does it it's like one day you wish you had like short hair and the next day you love your hair and it's just like it just goes back and forth but I am keeping it in hopes of the season two um because I don't want extensions if I don't need them uh, <laughs> I'd rather just be all my hair um so that's what I'm hoping for season two. Um, but that if it didn't happen yet, I'd probably, I'd probably trim it. I'd probably still keep it kind of long, but it wouldn't be this long. This is getting pretty long. I like it. I think it looks good. So no well, update on season two yet. 
No, I wish I had answers for you. I wish I, I wish I knew. You know, please tell me if you hear anything. If I, I hear anything, I will let you know right away because literally every single one of you has told me the same thing. And I started from the middle of the season through to after the season ended and every single person yeah. like, anything new, anything new, anything. And everyone's like, no, I don't know. Did you hear anything? I'm like, I don't have a press release yet. Like I would tell you, like, I don't know. So, but the, I do know, and I've said this before on the show, um, for people that are not in the industry, there is a letter of intent that has to go out by June, the end of June. It's like the last day of June to confirm moving forward. So like there is some sort of deadline yeah. we'll know at some point one way or the other, but I'm yeah. good that you guys haven't heard anything yet. Cause like we have upfronts coming up in a month and normally when there's upfronts and a lot of listeners probably know what this is already but it's like all the networks come and all the cast from the show has come and you guys have to do the whole spiel for all the like advertisers and then there's all like you know fans that come in and journalists and that whole thing so that's happening in may the cw always ha normally has one i know they're in the middle of a merger don't know if they're gonna have one or not but if they do mm -hmm. the hope would be you guys would all be there so i'm hoping we'll know before the upfront which means this month is what I'm going with, hopefully crossing my fingers. But if not, it doesn't, as long, I think you're in a good spot because we haven't heard no, is what I've been telling everybody. That's my opinion. Yeah, I think it's so. like no news, is good news type thing. Um, yeah. But yeah, you're right. I, I think, I feel like this has got to be the month we we find something out. Um, yeah. If they do upfront this year, um, we would definitely need to know before then, obviously, so they can, you can either take us or at least yeah. promoting the show um but yeah so I'm, I'm hoping that we'll know here this month and we'll, we'll see what happens it's you know some days it weighs really heavy on my my brain and there's other days i'm focused on the family and you know until someone asks me i, I don't think about it um which is good because i don't want to constantly be thinking about it but it's it's there for sure yeah so it's a, well, it's a I'm, I'm like this i'm keeping my fingers crossed because and i really i I honestly feel like you guys have nothing to worry about. I think Walker, Walker Independence and the Winchesters are good to go. That's what I mean. Like tell you everyone. That's how I personally feel. I don't make the decisions, unfortunately, but I think I'll let you know, but you'll know before me, I'm sure. But um, well, maybe, yeah. maybe sometimes I'm, <laughs> sometimes I live like outside of the city. So sometimes I'm, I'm disconnect myself. So yes, yeah, so if you hear anything, just tell me. And if I happen to know already, then we'll just celebrate together. So, <laughs> okay. Per that sounds good. Um, um, so I wanted to ask you, so like going back to the show, like really quickly, um, I had to get the hair and the wardrobe out of the way, but towards the, so like, let's discuss, I guess, like the ending of the show. So he has this huge arc, you know, Kellyanne's changed so much. Um, you personally have such great relationships, I think with everybody on the show, they all spoke so highly of you. Very funny stories, just like a lot of like fun stuff, but so finale show airs. Mm -hmm. First of all, I get screeners, so I saw it early, which kills me because I can't say anything to anybody. Um, so I was like waiting, but show airs, and we find out that Tom is now like missing, right? Like he didn't, he's gone somewhere. We don't know if that's good or bad. Some people are assuming it's good. I don't know if it's good or bad, um, but he's missing. And now we have, I think the final scene is the, is, is Gus and you like I think it's Gus and Kelly right is the final scene or one of the final scenes that the very last scene I, it's I one of the last one scene. of the last uh, yeah I think it's either the last scene or one of the last scenes sitting talking having a conversation so mm -hmm. if there was kind of a season two well when there's a season two where is mm -hmm. Kelly going is he going to head a little more back towards his kind of his people his tribe like because they feel like a loss of his presence because he's been helping out so much with the town. Or do you think he's going to remain focused as a tracker and remain adamant to catch Tom or whoever took Tom? That's a good question. Um, I, I don't write the show. So um, <laughs> at this point, there's a lot at stake for Callie and, and his tribe and the camp and with the railroad coming through. And that hasn't really been resolved. Uh, and we, we tried to make that clear in episode 11, like, like everything that we did in episode 11 was kind of a quick fix for, for the situation, but it, it wasn't a solution. And so I think where Callie's at in his brain is that he, he still needs to figure that out. Um, as distant as he is from his, from his tribe at the moment, it's like, he might not have a tribe to go back to if he doesn't figure this out. So 
I'd like to see Cali and get his hands dirty, see where he goes, see him you know, make some moves that, that can make some big changes for first people and for, uh, how Katie, I said for my people. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and, and see what happens, um, what happens next in that journey. Um, I think he needs to go, I need, I think he needs to go, go take some action somewhere for sure. So I'm curious to see where they go with it. Um, I can't wait to read, read what they have next. So I'll let, you know, hopefully, hopefully we get to explore that. If anything, when it ended, I was like, no, but then I was like, well, for season two, this is so great for you. Like as an actor, cause I feel like they're going to have to give you so much to just explain or like finish out some of those things that we kind of saw and didn't really get like resolve on, you know? So yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. telling the writers to put you in every episode, basically give us a full story of Cali and we want to know everything. So I mean, I, all the yeah. answers. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. It, they do a great job of balancing all the characters. It's, it, it's, it's not an easy thing to do and they do a pretty good job. And uh, yeah, I th I'm, I'm with you though. There's a lot that, that we still haven't figured out and, and for multiple characters. So it's going to be exciting to see where everybody goes and how, and how they inter intertwine together again in the next season. What is something that you're um, most looking forward to if you were to get a season two? Is it that like just adding, like kind of resolving storylines and adding stuff on? Is it more like, I just want to play him again and wear the outfit. I want to hang out with this cast. Like, what is like the thing that you're like most excited if they were to move forward and you got a renewal today? Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely going back and playing out and riding horses and, uh, and you know, all of that comes with the characters and the cast, but like, you know, this is, this is what I love to do. It's, it's what I've always loved doing. You, you realize since you're a kid, this is what you do. You, you make believe and you tell stories, you know, and, um, it's it's this show is so much fun in particular because you're not stuck in a stage all day you're you're out there you're out you're out walking around on horses you're you're doing stunts you're you know and the cast is amazing you're having a great time it's it's just it's just so much fun to make this show in particular and it would be a shame to not get to do that at least for another season um so if i got that news i, I would be pumped to just see everybody again and yeah, like I said, just get out there and get to have some more fun. And um, I have two questions for you and then you're done because I know you have time, oh, um, limited time. But um, I also wanted to ask you too, you know, in terms of, you know, moving forward and hanging out with everyone and doing kind of doing the whole thing. And we're waiting for the season two, obviously renewal and all of that fun stuff. Is there any fun? And I've heard some crazy stuff. So you might have to outdo some of the crazy stuff I've heard. But is there no. any fun specific moment or behind the scenes thing or story that you would like to share? Because, and every time I ask this, I, I because you're like towards the end, you, I get to say this, every single person had the same response and they went, oh man, there's so many. And I was like, well, just like, pay, like what's a couple of them? And I heard some crazy stuff that y'all do. So what are some of the things that you guys are doing behind the scenes in between, you know, the sets acting while they're resetting crazy weather i've heard stories about that so what's some like fun stuff you could share oh we're so silly though like i don't know we're always doing random stuff uh so lawrence and i started playing this game towards the end um <laughs> katie calls it tiny fingers it's a it's basically like i don't know how it started but we're like guess guess what numbers i hold up so like if i was gonna do it to you i'd go two one three right and you gotta guess what what numbers i hold up um but you do it really fast and the numbers kept getting smaller and smaller. And it I don't know if it was because it was the middle of the night and we're delirious or what, but it was hilarious. And we're like cracking up. You could barely like contain ourselves doing this game, me and Lawrence back and forth. And everyone would come in and wonder what was happening because I'm like dying laughing on the floor. Um, but we did this for like for hours, hours and hours and hours. And when you think about it, you're like, this is insane. It's not, it's not actually funny. Like even telling you the story now, it's I don't think anybody would think it was funny, but uh, that that's one of my fondest memories of being on set. And then also with COVID, we had these face coverings. Um, the, like you can either wear a mask or you can wear these like, so my favorite thing to do, which I probably get in trouble for, um, was when like Matt or Philly or Lawrence or Greg, I only did it to the guys because uh, I wanted to respect people 
and uh, I guess they don't get as much respect from me, was to go up to them and start making out with their glass on their face. Um, <laughs> and uh, and it looks really inappropriate, but I, I, it was really fun and funny to do. And it sounds silly when I say it out loud, but that was one of my favorite things. I have videos of it somewhere. Um, we'll leak those at some point. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, ha I was just gonna say, do you have photos? I have to get my hands on those videos. We have to leak those. There has, like, I mean, people will die. That'll be so funny. We can edit it together. Like, I'll have my team do it, and we'll put them I always try to catch them off guard, too, so they wouldn't know what was happening, and they were all really good champs about it, so. Oh, um, Justin, yeah. you just started a whole thing, because now I'm going to bother you for, like, a, you're going to have to start searching <laughs> out and bother you for something. I, I need Philly, and I need Matt. I need Philly and Matt. Okay. Those two, uh, like, are, I think them. those two are the chillest in terms of, like, if I really, they wouldn't get mad at me. So, um, I, you got to find those videos. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll go, I'll look, I'll go look and see what I can do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to end because we're a little over, but I want to ask a couple fan questions really quickly. So we'll do rapid fire so that you can get out of yeah, here. So you have, you know, a life. Um, but I tweeted out that I was speaking to you today and I think you'll be, um, semi-proud. I don't, I think it might've been like the first Maybe the pilot photo, but I can see if I could get it to show. But there's your picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nice. So I was like, ask me away. We I got thousands of things. So we would be on here for four uh, hours. You don't have the time, obviously. So I'm going longer. to go through. Um and no, excuse me. Okay. So someone asked, um, okay, so fall season, Rihanna said what was his favorite scene to do with uh i'm just gonna say with philly always told me philly mine was like you call me philly so i'm just gonna say philly every time but what was his favorite yes. scene to do with philly Ooh, my favorite scene with philly um <laughs> maybe the first scene we ever did in the pilot uh where he rides up alongside of me and we talk it was actually the very first scene we shot at the show it was the first scene uh that we did period and it was with philly and uh, he couldn't get his horse to move around my horse properly. So it took a long time. Uh, and that was really great. Uh, and I think I hold that memory dearly. But Philly was so much fun to work with. Every time we worked together, we'd, we'd go back and forth. It was like, you, you're really acting with this guy. He, he's always bringing you something new and different and, and, uh, and so much heart to everything he does. And, um, you know, watching him act is incredible. So even the even the the scene in episode and the flashback episode where um in episode twelve where he finds out that his wife died, like just being witnessed to that happening because I didn't really have much going on in that scene, but watching him work is incredible. So it, that's a hard one. Every scene I did with Philly was great, but those two stand out in my mind. Yeah, and actually, you guys are like two peas in a pod because when I talked about, I brought that scene up. And he said that he felt like he almost scared everybody because he was like so in, when he's laying on the table and like all the stuff's got kind of going on that like everyone kind of like yeah. stepped back and was like, whoa, like, and like, you know, gave him like a second to go through. That's a lot of emotion to do in, in those, like yeah, in the in flashback or even in like when he's on the table, you know, like in the, yeah. and he got shot. So, yeah. um, yeah. So I was like, oh, they weren't like, you know, joking. Right? He's like, no, not at that point. He's like, it was very like serious and everyone respected it. And, um, but we talked a lot yeah. about, it. but he said how great you were um, in that scene too. He was like, they're, they're all supportive of me. They'll help me out. So I love the two of you. I'm, it's like a bromance for me. I love it. Um, so someone else asked about where your storyline would like to go, but we actually talked about that already. Okay. So another fan asked what, oh, this is a good question. What is your favorite item from your wardrobe? Ooh, my favorite item. I really love my knife. Uh, we hardly ever see it. I, I, I took it out a couple of times, um, but I play with it a lot when we're when we're not doing anything. I pull it out and play with it. So I, I think I think that might be my favorite item of my wardrobe. Yeah. Okay. Um. Someone else asked. Let's see. Scrolling through. There's so many. Um. Someone else wanted to know. Okay. So this is a good one. Uh, are the boots comfortable? Uh, the boots are very comfortable. Yeah. Um, the only problem is they're flat. They're moccasins. So like they're flat. And 
I'm not, I'm not shorter than everybody else. Like there's times I'm next to Matt and I am like, I think I'm an inch shorter than Matt, but when he's in his cowboy boots with a heel and I'm in my moccasins and they're flat, I'm like, dude, this is not cool. I look like I'm like way lower than you. Uh, so I try to stand on the heels so, so we look like the same. And it's just an ongoing joke between me and I. But um, yeah, they're, they're very comfortable unless you step right on a rock or something. But there's not a lot of padding underneath. It's very flat. So um, there, there was one time I got off a horse and we're on this hill that we shoot on a lot. And there's a lot of rocks. And, uh, you know, you get off real quickly and I'm doing a scene and I landed right on a rock. My foot was bruised for a while after that. Um, so that's the only thing you got to kind of take into consideration. But other than that, I, they're like socks. So, yeah, they're very comfortable. Um, someone else asked, um, so I'll do the final question. Um, did you steal anything from the set for season one? Yeah, I did. I can't tell anybody I did. I, uh, so, I listen, some people one, told and some other people were like, I just walked away with it, but like, this is what I walked. It was something related to, so some people did that. So if you want to do that, but other people just outed it. They were like, yeah. No, I no, no, away with no. this. So I, I actually stole chop. So okay. <laughs> my final question for you is, you know, there mm -hmm. were, like I said, there were thousands of questions. So I'm sorry to any fan that's listening that I didn't get your question. I'm so sorry. But, um, you know, I, I try to keep you all for hours and hours. And some of, some of you went long, um, me and Philly, I think we went like four hours. We were like crazy. We were talking a lot. Um, but I wanted to ask you, there are so many fans of yours. And not everyone has the pleasure and the honor, like I do, to speak to you and get to talk to you about the show and kind of pick apart your characters and other things that you've been in. And I've seen a lot of stuff that you've done. So is there anything that you want to say to the fans that have kind of followed you from like Project Project, you've been on like 911 and like various like episodes of different shows and done stuff. So is there mm -hmm. anything to say to them that don't get to talk to you on a daily basis that are rooting for a season two and that just love you? I mean, I'm going to get all choked up. I mean, <laughs> um... Well, first of all, thank you. Thank you for for supporting me, for uh, being interested in the stories that I'm telling and, and for believing in me in those stories and, and caring to see more. I mean, that means a lot as a as an actor. It's it's pretty tough at times, um, especially when when you're working your way up. And it, it really takes like a lot of encouragement and support from people. And um, and that that's everyone involved, and whether it's, you know, your friends or your family or, or people who watch watch your work. So um thank you i hope to continue to earn that from you guys and um i can't wait to to keep telling this story hopefully and if not uh to bring out some more fun projects that you guys will enjoy so thank you well you have been the sweetest nicest person exactly what everyone described you as i was so excited because you, when you get hyped up you know you could be let down i was not let down you're the sweetest okay, most good human being um your background by the way is gorgeous i'm obsessed with those pillows um we'll we'll have to talk about that too um all the whole background all the very, amazing. Yeah. really cool yeah um but i want to well, thank we'll you do a follow up with more yeah, time we, have, we definitely have to do a follow-up when we have more time uh because i have so many more yeah. questions for you but um Let's i want to thank you so much i want to thank you for fitting this in because i know that you have to rush you got to go so i want to thank you so much for everything i really appreciate it and we will do, a, we'll schedule a follow up and have you back on and we'll talk more about it. Please, please we'll do. Thank you. <laughs> what was that last part? Sorry. And then we'll talk about hopefully season two. So, yes, yes, hopefully season two. Um, but yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for, I'm sorry I had to rush. Let's, let's please do. I'd love to keep chatting. I, I could do this for a long time. I, unfortunately, I have to go do some work. Um, but I appreciate you having me and, and you were awesome. You're amazing. So. Well, thanks so much. You're amazing too. So thank you. And you guys, if you're listening, you can go watch all of the episodes of Walker Independence on the CW app now for free. So go check it out. There'll be a link in the description below as well that you could click and um, go rewatch, 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 because there's going to be another season. I feel it. So go rewatch, support the show. Please. Thank you so much, Justin. Hope you guys enjoyed listening to Justin Johnson and Cortez talk about what it was like playing Kellyan, give us some behind the scenes details, and of course, talk about some of his favorite moments, especially those last final scenes of the season. He gave us a little bit of an update on the season two renewal. As of right now, we're still waiting, but we're keeping our fingers crossed. So if you want to check out all of the episodes of Walker Independence, head over to the CW app where you can stream all episodes for free currently right now. 
And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you're updated on all of our latest podcasts and head over to our YouTube channel, hit subscribe so you're updated on all of our video content. Thank you.